In this video, we're going to look at one of the ramp raster factories. And specifically, we're going to look at the ASCII XYZ factory. Now, a factory is something that takes data that is not in a raster form and generates a raster data set from that. In this case, the ASCII XYZ factory takes ASCII comma, comma separated value data, so tabular data, and it takes any coordinate fields that are in that data set as well as any value fields and bins those coordinates and values into a series of cells that represent a raster. So here's a graphical example of that from the Esri website. These grids here are my bins or my cells in the raster and they're numbered 0 to 8. The blue points that I have in here are the positions of the points that are in my tabular data set that are defined by an X and a Y coordinate. And in the case of bin number two, there are two points that fall within that bin. Each of those two points have a value of 10 and 30 respectively. So if I was to assign a value to bin number two or cell number two, and I had chosen to assign that value based on the mean of the of the values that have been binned into there, then the sum of these would be 40. There are two items in there, so the average or the mean would be 20. So that's the principle of binning, and it's distinct from uh, interpolated gridding, where if there is a cell, for example, bin number four, that does not contain any data, we might choose to interpolate the value of that bin or cell based on data from the surrounding cells or points. So going back to RAMP, let's open the ASCII XYZ processor or factory, and let's choose the first method, which is to bin a file. And you can see a whole series of properties here that we'll discuss in a second. But the first one is to ask for my input file. So let's go and have a look at an input file that I've already uh, created. And I'm going to do that using the ASCII data inspector tool in RAMP. And I'm going to choose the file that I would like to bin. In this case, you can see the contents of that ASCII file. And it is a standard ASCII CSV file. That's the expected format that the, uh, the, the ASCII XYZ binning processor would like. And that means that there is one header line that describes each of the columns within the data set, and that is followed by a series of comma separated values that fall within each of those columns. If you don't have a standardized ASCII CSV file like I do, then you can use the tabular data processor to import and create and generate standardized ASCII CSV files that can then be used for binning purposes. Let's have a look at this uh, file now in a tabular mode. So I'm going to open it in the standardized ASCII CSV file. And I can see now that I have um, easting, northing, and depth values. And if I inspect the values of the eastings and northings, they're moving by about 2 meters each step. And the same again for the northing, 38, 38, 40. So essentially, there seems to be a point every 2 meters which means that my bin cell size needs to be at least two meters. So let's go back to the factory or the processor and choose that file we just inspected. Choose the fields that define the X and Y values of the coordinates. In this case, it's the east field and the north field. And then the field that we want to use for the Z or the value of the raster. In this case, it's the depth field. Now, the bin size, we already looked at the coordinates and we found that they were spaced roughly about two meters apart. So I'm going to be a little bit cautious and I'm going to say, let's bin it to a three meter cell size. This is now asking for the no data value. That's just simply the null value. That value needs to be outside of the bounds of any value that could possibly be in the depth field, the Z field, or one of the, va the cell values. Now we can choose a series of different cell assignment methods. Now, 
these are the way that the information will be binned. We saw in the example from Esri that they were using the mean, but we can choose to actually bin the minimum value, the maximum value, the moving mean, which is actually a mean that's calculated from the last known value plus the current value divided by two. And so if you have more than two values, that tends to be biased towards the last value added. So it's not a true mean, it's a moving mean. And generally, if you define your cell size correctly, that and you have fairly homogeneous data, that shouldn't be an issue. Um, but we will look at later how you calculate the true mean, because this is a efficient approximation of the true mean. Replace means that you essentially assume the last known value and in, in the bin and use that as the bin value. Sum is the total sum of all of the points that have been binned into the cell and count is the total number of points that have been binned into the cell. <clears throat> so let's use, um, you'll notice that I can specify multiple here. So um, when I do this, wrap will generate the moving mean and in my case, the sum and the count. So let's use these three values. Okay, the other thing that it's asking for is a correction surface. So a correction surface is another raster data set that can be used to correct the resultant values in each bin. So for example, if you had data that was referenced to mean sea level and you wanted to convert that to lowest astronomical tide, so these are depth values that we're talking about, then what you could do is have a raster data set that defines the offset between mean sea level and lowest astronomical tide and use that as the value that corrects the binned, final bin cell values. So you're converting essentially from data that is in mean sea level to lowest astronomical tide. Let's just click OK and see this run and see what results we get. You can see that RAMP has now added three layers that represent the three statistic or binning statistics we asked for. The first one here is the moving mean then the sum and the count. Let's render this. And immediately we can see that the data set, we haven't really binned it. There, there are holes in the data set. Um, so we, we will probably need to do some sort of filtering on this data set to fill in those null values and make it smoother. So let's have a look at doing that first. So let's look at what we can do to resample this data to give us the ability to fill in some of these gaps. So I'm going to use the geometric transforms and I'm going to use a down, down sampling tool or processor, I should say a method. <clears throat> I'm going to choose the input, which is that one. I'm going to say, you know what, let's do, let's create a raster that has an output cell size of 25 meters and let's try to pull in to that cell anything that's within 51 cells or a 51 cell kernel from the central position of the um, center of the new output cell. So that means that it's going to use plus 25 and minus 25 cells in each direction on the input raster. It's going to mean those and create the resultant value for the output cell size of 25 meters. Let's allow that to run. Okay, so let's have a look at it. Let's render it. Yeah, that's a bit better now. Now we have something that is uh, a little bit more in indicative of what the true horizon that we're binning uh, looks like. So as we know, the input for this was a moving mean, which can sometimes be biased, but we've smoothed it out so much that really that doesn't make a lot of difference. But what if we wanted to create a true mean for these data sets? Then I would simply take the sum and the count and divide the two together. And I could do that. Let's, let's render these so we can have a look what they look like. That's the sum. That's the count. 
Let's take these two data sets now and d divide one by the other to create the true mean. So this is a sum of all values binned. And this is the count of all values with each, within each of those bins. So to do that, we'll use the uh, raster calculator or we can use raster math. Let's use raster math. Um, sorry, uh, math algebra. So what we're going to do is we're going to take, uh, let's take the sum and divide it by the count. Yep, and that's what the divide processor does. And we'll run that. It's now created the true mean. Let's have a look at that. Now that's the true mean value. So we'll call this true mean. Okay, let's do the same thing again. Let's try to um, smooth this data set out with the objective, of course, of filling in some of these null values. Let's be a little bit more smart about this. So we're going to use the geometric transforms again, and we're going to use the downsample, but we're going to use the true mean, and we're going to use, again, outputting 25, but we used a huge kernel size before. So let's halve the kernel size to 25. And this has created a raster that looks a little bit like this. So that's good. It has a lower resolution. It's a bit more broader. Um, now let's figure out how we can fill in those gaps. And we might be able to do that using local statistics. So what we want to do is maybe put a new kernel on this. So we'll say our input raster is the resample of the true mean. And we're going to use a kernel size of Let's just estimate 15. And we're going to use that to try to fill in the gaps. And here we go. We have a much truer representation of the data set because of the processing steps we made. So what we've looked at here with the, the binning tools is how you can bin data how you can interpolate in between and how you can create a in, in between null values and how you can create a data set that is representative of uh, what you'd like to, to, to show without creating too much bias. Interestingly, let's look at the difference between the data set we just created and the data set we had before where we purely used the um, geometric transforms to create the data set. You can see this is a little bit more blocky. This is a little bit more uh, clean and, and clearer and smoother. So it's up to you how you want to use those uh, combinations of different processes to smooth out anything that you've uh, binned. But let's quickly go back to the ASCII binning processor or factory and look at quickly the other methods in here. So we use the bin a file method, um, but you can also do exactly the same thing, but explicitly define what you want the output um, uh, extents to be spatially. That allows you just to, to gate. If you have a really big file, uh, and you can just ignore values um, <clears throat> that fall outside of your area of interest. You can also set it up so that you look at a folder that contains a series of, say, CSV files. And, uh, and then you can basically bin all of those files. So if you have 15 CSV files, you could bin all of those files into a single raster data set. And then the last method here allows you to take a whole bunch of different fi uh, input files and bin them into separate output raster files. So those are the options that you have uh, here with the ASCII XYZ binning tool. Thanks very much. I hope it was useful to you.